Thank you for tuning in to Perfecting Live, the online worship service for Perfecting Love Community Church. Parents, do you have a safe place for your children to be successful this school year? If not, PLCC is the place for you. In partnership with the YMCA, Perfecting Love will be a virtual learning center for all the essential working parents. Space is limited, meals are included, and guess what? It's free! Go to ymcamemphis.org to register today. That's not all. If you are looking for employment, the YMCA is hiring for site workers. Visit ymcamemphis.org and apply today. Save the date. Our last Love on the Lot will be Sunday, September 13th at 12 noon, Jersey edition. Rep your favorite NFL team. Physical distancing protocols will be followed. See you then. Let's get active. Our virtual wow on Wednesdays has gone beyond our four walls. We are walking and talking. Grab your tennis shoes and earbuds and meet us at 6.30 p.m. Log in using the regular Zoom ID. And don't forget Bible study every Sunday at 9 a.m. Let's continue to grow together. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, we pray you will consider being a financial blessing to the ministry. To give, text PLCC to 77977. Click the link and follow the instructions. Thank you in advance for your generosity. For the latest information, Please visit our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church, our YouTube channel, Perfecting Love CC, or our website, PerfectingLoveCommunityChurch.org. These have been your morning announcements. We are Perfecting Love Community Church, the place where imperfect people strive for God's perfect love. We don't judge, we love, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed and have a wonderful day. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to join in with us as we worship and give God a high praise. There's power in the name of Jesus. We're free to dance and sing. We're free to lift our hands and worship. Somebody said, Lord, I'm free. Yeah.
Welcome to Perfecting Live, the online worship experience of Perfecting Love Community Church. We're so delighted to have you come and worship with us on today, and it is our prayer that your stay with us, your visit with us, will be one that is beneficial to your soul. Just a couple of quick announcements and reminders before we go back into the sanctuary. Just want to remind all of you that you have a great opportunity right now to love on your brothers and sisters in Christ during our fellowship moment. Comment below, high fives, fist bumps, your virtual hugs and your waves. Let everybody know that you are here to worship the Lord with them virtually. No, we can't do it physically, but we can stay connected virtually. Also want to thank God for all of you who continue to be faithful in your giving. If you would like to be a blessing to our church by the giving process, all you have to do is either mail your seed to the church, 3180 Old Get Well Road, that's Memphis, Tennessee, 38118, or you can download our app, by just searching for Perfect and Love on the iTunes store or the Google Play store. Or you can go to our website to give. And our website is www.perfectandlovecommunitychurch.org. Or our easiest method is to text to give. Text PLCC to the number 77977. You'll receive a link back. When you get that link, click on it. And once you click on that link, follow the instructions and we will definitely receive your seed. We don't believe in giving in response to pressure. We don't believe in giving out of necessity. But we believe that God loves a cheerful giver. So whatever that seed is that you want to share, we will be most grateful for that seed that you sow into this ministry. And we believe that God will bless you some 30, some 60, and some even 100 fold. Before we go back to the sanctuary, I do want to just give you an opportunity right now to go ahead and share this broadcast. There are many people all around the world who would love to come and worship with you on today. And all it takes is you using your platform to invite somebody to come and worship the Lord with you on today. So just click that share button. Come on in and let's uh, invite those to come on in and worship the Lord with us on today. Last but certainly not least, we are blessed today to have one of my friends, my brothers in the ministry, Pastor Eric Gibbons from the second Baptist Church in Coldwater, Mississippi, who's going to share the word of God with us on today. And so I ask that you all get with the preacher and let him know that you are receiving the word of God that is in store for you on today. We want to be praying for him and lifting him up as God continues to deliver a word for us for such a time as this by way of a gospel preacher and that of Pastor Eric Gibbons. And so now let's get ready to go back into the sanctuary. And before we do that, I want to offer a quick word of prayer so that we can go higher in this worship celebration. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you now for this time to come together and worship. Lord, we thank you for blessing us to see another week. That's a sign that lets us know you're still in the miracle working business. You've kept our minds. You've kept our health. You've kept our, our finances. You've kept our families. You've kept everything together, God. And we just want to tell you thank you. Lord, we pray now that as we pray to go higher in this worship service, that you will send a word to our homes, that you will go to wherever we may be viewing this broadcast, whether it's at home or whether it's listening at work or whether we're out working out or whatever we may be doing, God, that you will meet us right where we are and then take us up to where we belong. God, we pray now that our worship will match our expectation. We believe you're up to something great. And so, God, we're going to meet what you're going to do for us with a high praise. We're going to give you the best praise that we have. We love you. We honor you. And we pray for the music ministry. We pray for the preached word, oh God. We pray that everything that needs to go forth will reach all of us in, the, in your spirit, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you'll have your way. Do what you do like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Let's go back into the sanctuary and let's have church. As we prepare for the word of God, thank you, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. Have I got one witness? 
Is there anybody that love the name of Jesus?
I love the gospel of John. It's one of my favorite gospels because John writes this gospel as an old man, but he writes it to a new church. And he writes this gospel to say to them, I know that storm winds are going to blow. I know trouble is going to be on every hand. And so I want to anchor you in such a way that I want to present to you. Matthew talked about his genealogy. Mark shows him a servant on the move, but John says he was the word made flesh. John called him Emmanuel, God with us. 
And so I love the Gospel of John. So I want to invite you to one of my favorite books of the Bible, the Gospel of John. Uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 15, you'll find words recorded like these. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. For the time that is ours to share, I want to talk about what it means to run on empty to run on empty I got a disclaimer tonight I might as well go ahead and tell you that this word may not be for everybody this word this morning may not be for every child or every saint in the in the sanctuary but I just want to pass this word on because it may be somebody in the audience it may be somebody listening to us via media stream it may be somebody that knows what it feels like to run on empty is there anybody here that can testify that life has had you in some moments where you were running on films here it is this woman that John places in this gospel in the fourth chapter she can help us to understand sister Sharonda what it feels like to run on empty and I want to invite the empty folk and the folk who know what it's like to run on films the folk who are getting tired of being locked in and the folk who are getting tired of being shut in I want to invite those folk who you've almost got down to your last reserve nerve I want to invite you to the text and see if God will help us help those folk that know what it feels like to run at the end of yourself and this text invites us and I want to invite us in one of the things I discovered y'all while I was just reading something other than the scripture I was reading a book called The Habits of Health. I'm trying to do better with that, Pastor Mitchell. I ain't up to 100 sit-ups like you, but I'm just trying to do the best I can. And so while I was reading The Habits of Health, here is something that struck me while I was reading. There's something in the book called Elements, and the Elements speaks of this, that many folk confuse the difference between pleasure and satisfaction. What happens is, guess what, y'all? Most folk do what it is that brings them pleasure, and they don't ever get to a place called satisfaction. Can I park here just for a moment? Somebody know. You open up. I know y'all don't do it. I'm just talking out loud about myself. Have you ever opened up a, a, a box of ice cream and you said you were just going to get you a few scoops and you were going to put it back in the refrigerator? As a matter of fact, you wasn't even going to fix you a whole bowl, but something happened when you put your spoon in the box. And when you put your spoon in the box, you do know that statistics says that 75% of the folk, after they start eating, they ain't even hungry no more, but they keep on eating because the spoon gives them them some pleasure and somebody needs to understand the difference between pleasure and satisfaction and so all time what happens to us we find ourselves running on empty because we run after pleasure but the problem with pleasure is the moment you stop performing pleasure ends but the good news is if you ever learn how to find your way to plug into satisfaction satisfaction will show up way down the road baby bummer help me with this and is there anybody here that when you read this text and you know what it feels like to run on empty ever had those moments where you sometimes may have confused the difference between pleasure and satisfaction well here's the juxtaposition of it sister Rhonda the juxtaposition is this uh, things that bring satisfaction will last way beyond the effort to complete them 
Let me see if I can help you out. My dear mama went home December the 14th to be with the Lord. She, got, she went on to be with Jesus and be with my daddy and my niece and my brothers. And when she went home to be with the Lord, something she did in 1981, I vaguely remember signing a signature on it. But she took out a life insurance policy that I ain't even had a chance to cash yet. And somebody understands that mama could have bought her a dress. Mama could have bought some high heel shoes. But what mama understood that a dress may have bought her some pleasure, but life insurance would give her baby some satisfaction. And is there anybody listening to me know that every now and then, am I talking to anybody that know what it is to live on the blessings of the decisions of mama and big mama? Is there anybody here other than me? Can I just tell you, can I throw it out for free, y'all? I didn't mean to get happy this quick, but just the other day, Jason, uh, my tuition came due. And when my tuition came due, I remember mama had took out some money, and I took what mama gave me and placed it down because my mama knew something about the difference between chasing out the pleasure and slowing down and living in satisfaction. I, I, I believe y'all this woman, this woman at the well is an ocular demonstration of those of us who know what it is to be confused between pleasure and satisfaction. Have you ever seen people who want something more and more and yet what they do or what they want uh, uh, they, they, is less and less fulfilling? Uh, say it better, Pastor. Have you ever seen somebody who wants something? They want it more and more, and yet when what it, what, it, what it brings them is less and less satisfaction. You know what they call that behavior, don't you? They call that addiction, Sister Sharonda. When you want something more and more, and you'll do anything to get it, but when you get it, instead of it making you better, it makes you worse. Instead of you becoming a delivered person, you become somebody who is deeper in bondage, and somebody listening to me running on empty, maybe you've been trying to find pleasure in the things of life, only to discover that when those things that you sink yourself into the trouble is Jason they won't ever deliver you Dr. David Larry Boyle helped me with this he says some stuff ain't designed to work and I want to invite somebody in that's listening to me tonight uh, this morning I want to invite somebody in to just share with you every now and child of God when you find yourself running on empty can I get you to switch your fuel source you got to switch over from pleasure and learn how to seek God for satisfaction is there anybody listening to me that you discovered that God knows better than you know or how to take care of you. God knows better than you know how to deliver you. God knows better how to make ways for you than you even know for yourself. I hear Isaiah say his ways ain't like ours. His thoughts are not like ours. Higher than the heavens are from the earth. And what I discovered is God really does know how to take care of you. Have I got any witness in the room this morning that you can testify if it had not been for the Lord God who has been on your side you don't know where you would be. Here it is, y'all, in the text. I believe, I believe that what we discover in this woman, what I believe that what we discover in this woman, she becomes what I call a microcosm. She's a microcosm for each of us. But that ain't my shout, y'all. Can I go and give you my shout quickly? My shout is, is the fact that while she's in her cycle, while she's in her cycle of trouble, while she finds herself in her dilemma, my shout is, is that God in Jesus Christ shows up to where she is. And I want to invite somebody to help me walk through this text and share with me that when God in Jesus Christ shows up, what you will discover is that what you could not do on your own, God has a way of doing for you. Can I show it to you in the text? Here's what I like. I like the fact that Jesus shows up where this woman is. He shows up because he knows what she don't know. He knows that she's been seeking pleasure and not satisfaction. And he literally knows that she's running on empty. Here's the background of the text. The background of the text opens this way. The text moves to this place. And when it moves to this place, it moves Jesus from sitting with a Pharisee on his way to a town called Samaria. As a matter of fact, in one of the left out verses, Jesus said, I must need go by way of Samaria. Look, Samaria is an unlikely stop. It's the kind of place that most self-respecting Jews would do everything they could to avoid. But what I like about Jesus, folk who are running on empty, he's the kind of God that shows up even in your depression state when other folk don't even want to answer your call. He's the kind of God that shows up when disillusionment knocks at your door. He's the kind of God that involves himself when you find yourself overwhelmed by life. He's the kind of God that when it seems that life has you surrounded and you are outnumbered, he's the kind of God that you can have a conversation with. Take another look at the same hills and God will let you see something altogether different. He's the kind of God when you have lion den experiences, he'll get in the lion den with you. He's the kind of God when 
when you have fiery furnace moments, he won't let you walk around by yourself. But as a matter of fact, he'll get in the fire with you. He's the kind of God when you find yourself at Red Sea moments. He's the kind of God that makes a way out of nowhere. He's the kind of God when you find yourself in the valley of Eli and giants are on the other side of the mountain. He's the kind of God that keeps on showing up. All I'm trying to tell somebody that's listening to me this morning is battle is coming. And if you hang on long enough, child of God, what you will discover, my God is the kind of God that makes better come out of things. Whenever Jesus, y'all watch this, whenever Jesus entered the equation, uh, the bad news can't be the last news. Holly, y'all stay with me. Whenever Jesus shows up, whatever your bad news is, your bad news cannot be your last news. Watch this. Weeping may endure for a night. That's bad news, ain't it? But joy comes in the morning. That's the good news of the text. When it's over my head, that's bad news. It's still under God's feet. That's good news. The wages of sin is death. That's bad news. But the gift of God is eternal life. Is there anybody here other than me know that my God specializes in bringing triumph out of our troubles? It ought to be one witness in here that can testify that we got a God that can bring triumph out of our troubles. Dr. Mitchell, what I discovered in reading this word, every time I read the word, what I discovered is the gospel of Jesus Christ ought to be good news to somebody to hear it. And so since we're parking and we're trying to preach the gospel, I believe we ought to lift some good news. I believe we ought to say to somebody who's running on empty, we got a God who shows up. And he shows up in the unlikeliest places. He shows up in the kind of places that other folk will go around. He show up when other folk check in their caller ID. You can call him and he'll show enough answer have I got one witness in the room that can testify that you anybody here other than me you ever tried him don't fool me now have you ever called on him didn't he make a way didn't he come through didn't he deliver didn't he open door didn't he bless you have I had anybody that God has given you some mind-blowing blessings when you look around you don't even know how you survived it when the pandemic broke out you want to throw up your hand and you still got your hands up but now they're not surrender their hands of victory is there anybody listening to me that God has called you to flourish he's giving you favor even in unfavorable situations here it is in the text two things bless me when I read it two clues jumps out at me uh, it's in verse 4 and verse 5 verse 4 Jesus says I must need go by the way of Samaria and verse 5 says it's the sixth hour stay with me here y'all the stage is being set now for a private meeting the last private meeting Jesus has in John's gospel is with Nicodemus uh, but watch this y'all this woman and Nicodemus are complete opposite of each other the only thing they have in common is they both need Jesus yeah. listen to the text y'all he, he's a man she's a woman he's a Jew she's a Samaritan he's a respected ruler she's a social outcast we know his name we just know her trouble. But what we discover is when we read their story, read their stories, what we discover is the God that we serve is able to deal with each of them where they are in their respective places. Y'all just missed the place to shout. I know I go fast. Sometimes when I get happy, I go fast. Let me hit rewind and press play because y'all missed it. Let me see if I can go back and get you. Uh, what I just said to you is it don't matter what side of the track you're from. It don't matter where you matriculate. It don't matter if you got front pocket money or back pocket money. It don't matter what other folks say about you or what other folks folks think about you the good news is God loves you so much child of God that he'll come right where you are when you're trying to shut the world out the God that I serve he'll walk in a dark closet and hear you and answer your prayer the God that I serve will lift depression from you I ain't just talking about what I read in the book child of God I got my own testimony I got my own receipt I've seen God do great things here it is y'all this woman is the representation of the statement that Jesus makes in John 3, 16, where he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have, have everlasting life. This woman is a part of what I call the whosoever crowd. As a matter of fact, if whosoever was a person, it would be the woman at the well. I just want to raise a question. I'm going to try to scoop my way on through here. I just want to raise a question. Is there anybody here other than me that you can declare that you're a part of the whosoever crowd? Anybody in this room other than me that you're a part of the crowd that some folk may have counted out even though they didn't count on you? Are you a part of the crowd that may have gotten overlooked but God saw fit to use you? Are you a part of that crowd that God says, I'm in a whosoever. I'm going to find three or four whosoever folk to help me. I know it ain't always been the way you want it to be. I know it ain't 
always gone the way you want to go. I know you have not dotted every I and crossed every T, but didn't God come and make a way for you anyhow? Didn't God show up and turn stuff around in your life? Didn't God heal you when you were hurting? Didn't God ease your troubled mind? Didn't God speak peace in the midst of your chaos? Is there anybody other than me that you are part of the whosoever crowd? But the good news is the God that I serve will put a whosoever on his itinerary. He'll make a detour to come see about us. It is this woman, y'all. Let's first, here's the look, here's my point. The first thing I want to share with you, look. Let's look at the detour, the decision to make a detour, to go by way of Samaria. Watch this, y'all. When Jesus goes by way of Samaria, what he really does, he begins to break down the barriers. Watch this, y'all. Here's my shout. Uh, my shout is that when God starts working in Jesus Christ, it's nothing short of amazing. Anybody here, can I slow down because I've been happy already. Anybody here, have you ever just took a moment to, to take a look at what God has done? Anybody, have you ever examined, come on now, you ever examined the grace that God has put on your life? Am I talking to anybody here that knows what it feels like to run on empty? Have you ever had those moments that you want to throw up your hands and holler have you ever had to use your uh, Gladys Knight theology you had to use your imagination to find a good reason to keep on keeping on trying to make the best of a bad don't y'all act like it's Sunday morning y'all don't know who Gladys Knight is I, I'm not talking to somebody this morning that knows that God is the kind of God who knows how to make detours to come and get whosoever and then he'll tear down every barrier that get between you and your breakthrough Oh, Lord, help me pre preach this morning. Uh, watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this. Jesus breaks down cultural barriers. She, she lifts them. He don't. He, she says, I'm a Samaritan, and, and you're a Jew. And, and, and besides that, I'm a woman, and you're a man. What, what, what are you doing here? You, you're not from the same race that I am. We don't even talk. We don't even have the same kind of religion. She says, but what she don't know is that God in Jesus Christ shows up to deliver her, to deliver her from the things that had her bound. He came to deliver her even from her own self-imposed prison. Let me see if I can show it to you. I find this interesting, Dr. Jason. This, this blessed my life because what she was experiencing was nothing short of God's amazing grace. Yeah. Now, now, can I help you out? Uh, what I discovered is when you read the scripture, it's hard to find the working biblical definition for grace. It, I, unlike, you know, if you want to know what love is, just get your Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians, go to chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. Love is kind. Love is patient. It's not, it does keep records of wrong. It ain't puffed up. It ain't easily provoked. Love don't keep any records. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love never fails. We can find that. If you're looking for faith, you can find it. You can go to Hebrews chapter 11, go to verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. We can find some definitions for faith and love. But it amazed me that when I start trying to figure out where can I find a biblical definition of grace? I couldn't find one. Then I could almost feel my big mama tap me on my shoulder. Say, boy, don't let them three classes you went to go to your head. You ain't going to be able to explain everything you see. But here's what I like about grace, baby. Even if you can't explain it, you can experience it. And have I got anybody in this room that you can testify? You might can't explain it, but you've experienced God's grace at work in your life. You've experienced God touch you. You've experienced God give you strength. You have experienced God making a way for you. Am I talking to somebody that can testify that you've got your own experience of grace? How sweet that sound that saved a wretch like up. And there ain't anybody other than me that you can shout about not only the detour that he makes for the woman, but thank God for the detour that he made to come and get up. If he had not come to South Memphis and a ghetto, I would still be there. I am the last of seven children. I had one brother murdered. I had one brother drank himself to death. I'm the last of seven. I wasn't supposed to get out of the ghetto, but is there anybody glad that the God that we serve, he'll make a detour in South Memphis, swoop by Riverside, by way of Carver High School, and he'll do something with somebody that other folk counted out and overlooked I'm grateful I'm grateful that I am an experiencer of God's amazing grace here's the second thing I see y'all I don't want to hold you too long here's the second thing I see watch this not only do I want you to look at the detail I want you to listen in on the discussion I'm going to pick it up around verse 7 if you don't mind listen to him listen to the text how the text says give me a drink when Jesus asks in the text to give me a drink 
Sharonda, what he's implying is, I'm giving you an invitation to sit at the table with me. And you do know when Jesus gives you an invitation to sit at the table, that means whenever I invite you into my home, Revelation 3.20, without behold, I stand at the door and knock. Any man hear my voice, I come in and sup with him. What that means, what the suggestion is or the implication is, is that when I am sharing with you, the implication is, is that I'm going to protect you. The implication is that I'm going to make ways for you. The implication is if you don't think that in that culture that hospitality was a strong way, watch this, and this ain't on my nose, but watch this. When they, when they came, when the angels came at Lot's house and the folk wanted to come and get him, the, 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 the man of the house, because of his hospitality, was willing to even send his daughters and not those who were his guests. And what I'm saying in this text is the implication is when Jesus says, give me something to drink, what he's really saying is, daughter, I want to talk with you. Daughter, I want to tell you about what it is that's going on in your life. And here's what I like about the question, Jason. When he raises the question, he is not asking her questions because he's trying to dig up dirt. He's just trying to get her to confess. And what you do know is when you confess, you ain't informing God. You're simply agreeing with God. You're simply saying with God, saying to God, I'm saying about my stuff, God, the same thing that you said about my stuff. And so he's talking to her, not because he's trying to judge her. I bet you that blew her mind because that's why she came in the heat of the day. She didn't want to see nobody. She didn't want to talk to anybody. And here he is engaging her in conversation and breaking down barriers. Listen to this discussion. She says in verse 9, she says, listen, uh, can, I, can I use my South Memphis vernacular? She says, I, I ain't quite sure where you're coming from. Uh, what, what's his angle? Uh, he, 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 he's not from the same side of the track. Uh, I'm not, I can't believe, in fact, when most men have conversations with me, I know where it's going before they even get it out their mouth. So she, don't, she ain't sure what it is that he's up to. She's trying to figure out what his anger. And then here it is, Jesus sets her up. It's in verse 10. Jesus says in verse 10 of the text, watch this. He says, watch this. Here it is. Uh, he says, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Yeah. It's a setup. <laughs> Look at your neighbor telling him, it's a setup. He going somewhere with this. When Jesus says, if you knew who it was, you would have asked me and I would have given you living water. It's a setup. Jesus knows the problem is, is that she's been living on substance to living water. Truth of the matter is, watch this, y'all. I got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that this woman in the text ain't the only somebody that's been living on substitute living water. I believe it's some weary folk, and the reason you weary is because you've been trying to find stuff that you can't find in nobody but Jesus. You've been running to here and running to there. You think it's in your bank account? It ain't in your bank account. You think it's in who's in the White House? It ain't who's in the White House. I'm not, well, I, uh, it ain't about all of that. All I'm trying to say is you got to get to a place where you understand that when he shows up, he is the one that when you get in discussion with him, he's setting her up and getting her now ready for her breakthrough. Watch this. How you know? How you know? How you know? It's in verse 11. The text, he said, are you talking about this living water? But uh, he ain't got no bucket. And the well is deep. Ah, this shouts me. Because sometimes I'm like this woman when I'm reading the promises of God. And I want to ask myself, God, how are you going to do this? I don't see how you're going to give me a breakthrough in this moment. I don't see how you're going to do this, but I want to tell you. Tell somebody, it does not matter about what you see as long as you heard what he said. Oh, God help me. Uh, the problem is sometimes, y'all, we're so concerned about what we see until we don't plug into what he said. What I want to suggest to you this morning is that when he says it, it don't matter if you see it. Go on and praise him on the front end of what you are believing him to do. You got to understand this thing that when God is talking, when God begins to speak, even if you don't see it, go on and shout on what he said. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. How, how many of us know if you're going to become a real worshiper, you're going to have to stop looking at your limited resources and start looking at your source. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't you miss what God is doing because you have a preconceived idea of how you want God to bless you. Don't miss it, child of God. He may have already sent it two or three times, but because it's not packaged the way you want it to be packaged, you'll miss what God is doing. Sometimes God has to let you lease a spot, that, and then sometimes the place got to burn down, and then God has to turn around and bless you because they had one price tag in the beginning, and they'll give you another one. And don't you miss it. Don't worry about how it's packaged. When God says that should have been a place for this church to go up and give God glory,
glory. The problem I'm trying to say is when God gets ready to bless you, don't worry about the package, baby. Just hold on to the promise. Here it is, y'all. I, I got a little dog that helped me with this worship stuff. Uh, he ain't my dog. He's my wife, dog. Uh, she bought him for my daughter's 16th birthday, and I'm going to be honest. I, uh, don't judge me. I'm jealous of the dog. I, I, I got it out there, y'all. Y'all, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want sister Gibbons paying nobody that much attention other than me. You understand? Uh, that dog crazy about that woman, and and and, and that dog. Listen, uh, uh, when the garage go up, she run, and I can hear her run to the door, and she'll look up because we got that little glass in the garage door. She'll look up and see me and turn around. <laughs> My wife come home, the same thing happens. But by the time she gets to the door with her key, Juice is on her hind legs barking and jumping and, and hopping all around my wife. And I know what y'all looking at me saying, Pastor, what that's got to do with worship? Thank you, Juice, for helping us with my illustration. Juice said to me when I raised the question, you don't act like that when I come in the house. You, you don't cut up and clown like that. You don't jump on hind legs with, with both your front paws lifted up. You don't do that. Juice said, well, the only problem is, Pops, is when I'm sick, she takes care of me. When I'm hungry. She feeds me. When there's no water in the bowl, she gives me cool water. When I need grooming, she pays for the grooming. Pops, all I'm trying to tell you is me and you are right. But the difference is, is she takes care of me. Y'all missed it. Uh, when you think about who it is that woke you up this morning, when you think about who it is that started you on your way, when you think about who gave you the activities of your limbs, uh, when you think about when you're hungry, he feeds you. When you're thirsty, he'll give you a drink. When you're naked, he clothes you. When you're sick, he heal you. You ought to give him that kind of worship. To be a real worshiper, you got to move the restraint and know that the God that you serve has the source. He is your source. And this woman has to move from her limited resources. She has to get to what it is that God has for her. Watch this, y'all. Have, have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed this? Uh, when this woman raises this question to Jesus, when she raises this question, Jesus responds with his own question. He, he does that a lot, Dr. Mitchell. When you read the scripture, when Job called Jesus on the witness stand and interrogated him, and when he began to question Jesus, Jesus, Jesus didn't, the, the, the father didn't say anything. He simply reported back to Job in a rhetorical way, Job, where were you? When I formed the mountains, where were you? Job, tell me, who gives the lightning its path? Job, tell me, how come the ocean know how, how, how far to go and when to retreat back to itself? Job, he's asking Job a question. What he was really saying, well, I know you got a question, but listen, whenever you got a question, the answer is always found in me. That's what he did in the Gospel of John later on in chapter 14 when they were wondering and he gets ready to go away. One says, show us the Father. He says, how long have I been with you and you've not known me? One says, show us the way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All I'm trying to say, church, is whatever your question is, your answer is always found in him. Yeah. And so he replies back to her. When he raises a question, when she raises a question, are you greater than Jacob? <laughs> he don't even play with her. He said, look, the water that Jacob put in here, if you drink of that water, you will thirst again. But the water I got for you, if you drink from my water, you'll never thirst again. Watch this, y'all. I got to cut across the field. We're running out of time. But one of the things I discovered is when you walk with the Lord in this way, God does something with you supernatural. I was reading a book by Jim Cimbala called Fresh Wind and Fresh Fire. It's about a church in New York. And there's this redhead girl who's testifying on an Easter Sunday night. And while she's testifying about what God had did in her life, uh, she begins to talk about how he cleaned her up of her drug addiction, how she had been running on empty, Jason, trying to find somebody sleeping in cars, doing everything she had to just survive. And she she testified that one morning she was in a shower in a drunken stupor just high on drugs and some kind of way that Sunday morning she raised her window up. My big mama said she heisted it up and when she raised her window up the music started flowing from the church across the street and while the music was flowing from the church across the street something on the inside that had been put in her a long time ago it stirred up and she went to the church and when she went to the church the word that had gone forth changed her whole life she was delivered, she was set free, she was Chain, her whole life changed. She told her story, the nitty and the gritty. And while she's telling her story, there's a boy who comes from the back of the church, Jason. You can smell him before he gets there. He's grungy. He slept out all night. He's covered in all that he's been sleeping in and all that he's been doing. And before he could get there, because it was Easter Sunday, Pastor Simbala had a white suit on. And so he ran his hand in his pocket and he was about to give the man a couple of dollars and send him on his way. But the man said, No. 
if you give me the two dollars, I'll go back and I'll die. That's not what I'm up here for. I think this might be a good thing for the church to understand. The man says, I'm not here for your two dollars. I want to meet the Jesus that that red-haired girl talked about. I want to meet somebody that can turn my life around. I want to meet somebody that can do what no other power can do. I want to meet somebody who's a strong deliverer. Watch this, y'all. Jesus moves this discussion. I'm in verse 16. I'm shutting down. Jesus moves this discussion. He gets to this place and he raises the question. Where are your husband? It's a loaded question. I told you he set up when he talked about the water. Where are your husband? What he was trying to do was uncover. He wasn't trying to embarrass her. He was trying to get her to confess. I ain't got no husband. She said, you're right. And the one at the crib now ain't yours. And when he begins to speak to her, He's setting her up because now what he's saying to her is I'm getting ready to create a shift. Not only did I detour to come to where you are, and after I made the detour, I baited you in for discussion, but now I'm getting you ready for deliverance. Yeah. It's in the text. It's in the text. Watch this. He shifts because here it is. I think I put on the bulletin board that deliverance precedes discipleship. Uh -huh. And the text says that when Jesus got through talking to her, she went away. Verse 28 says she went away to the same folk that she had been avoiding. She also owned her own story, and her story no longer owned her. It may be somebody that's listening to me that you want to be free. You want to be delivered. Your story has owned you, but now you want to take ownership of your story, and you want to have the ability to talk about your story. Can I tell you on the low, low, whatever you can't talk about, that means that thing already got you. But when you've been delivered from it, you can talk about it, you can shout about it, you can tell the world about it. And she declares, come see a man that told me everything that I ever done. I want you to come see him and I want to just raise this question. Y'all not going to bid y'all good evening. I bid you good morning. Can I go and give this to my way to my seat? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, Dr. Jason. But watch this, y'all. The text says, and I think I put on the board somewhere, how you know when you've been delivered? Watch this, y'all. This is when I know for sure that God in his detour with Jesus and the discussion that he had with Jesus and now the deliverance. Watch this. I know that she had been delivered and her and her, her life had been changed and filled. You know, I know. The text says when she got through talking to him, she dropped her pot. Y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me. Uh, Y'all don't see the irony in that? She got up in the heat of the day thinking that what she needed was water. And when she got up in the heat of the day thinking that what she needed was water, that thing had value to her. But once God fills you up with his amazing grace, he'll change your value system. The stuff that you thought you couldn't live without, you shout that it's gone now. The stuff that you thought would be the end of you, you shout because you discovered it was a new beginning. The stuff that you've been wrestling with privately, you publicly can testify. Come see a man that told me everything. I ever done, don't do me like that. Come see a man that told me everything that I ever done. Good morning, church. May the Lord God bless you real good. But is there somebody in the room? Is there somebody in the room that can help me? You remember that old song they sang in the church? I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He filled my heart with love, and he wrote my name above. And just a little talk, what Jesus makes it right. Anybody in the room glad that God and Jesus Christ he made a detour to your destination. Anybody in the room glad that when he made a detour I said a few Sundays ago the, the shout about when God makes detours and gets in discussion he has the editing rights to your story and that simply means this no matter how bad it looked, no matter how dark it was, when it started, because he's the author, watch this, and he's the finisher. He has the editing rights to my story. And if anybody should ever write my life story, for whatever reason there might be, tell them Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Is there anybody that's listening to me that you can give God glory for the ways that he made in your life? Is there anybody here that can shout that he stopped by to come and see about you? Is there anybody here that can give him praise that there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus? Is there anybody here that can shout and testify that all things work out for the good of them that love the Lord? Is there anybody coming to give him glory because you discovered that he's away when you cannot see your way? Is there anybody that can help me shout hallelujah? My story 
Jesus has helped you. Somebody help me give him praise. Could you lift your hands and tell him, Lord, I'm available to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way. My storage. Yes! 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 He's my way maker. He's my burden bearer. He's my heaven on shower. He's my all in all. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. For when I was running on empty, he came to see about me. Yes, he did. He picked me up. He turned me around. Yeah. Yeah. Place my feet on solid ground. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not to rest the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Is there anybody in the place that you can shout, I'm available? Anybody in the place can declare, Lord, feel me? Anybody in the place said, I'll be satisfied with Jesus and Jesus alone. Give him glory. Open up your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he made a ways, you ought to say so. If he healed your body, you ought to say so. If he regulated your mind, you ought to say so. If he made a ways for you, you ought to say so. Yeah! Yes, sir! One Friday on a hill called Calvary, he died. Yes, he did. He died. Yes, he did. He died. Yes, he did. Somebody said that somebody cried out that surely it must be the Son of God. Surely. I heard that old centurion. He cried out, we crucified a many man. But no man has crucified like this man at Calvary. One thief on the one side. Say, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Have I got any company in the room that when you think about what he did, you want to cry out, Lord, remember me. Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing, remember me. And the Bible says that my Lord and your God stopped dying to have another conversation. And he said to the man, on this day, when you shut your eyes on this side, you'll wake up on the other side. And they said that they speared him in the side. I hear my old preacher say, came out blood and water, water for baptism and blood for redemption. I can hear my old pastor cry out now, and he died. Yes, he did. He died. Yes, he did. They placed him in Joseph's tomb. But the Bible says it's a borrowed tomb. And to borrow means to pay back in anybody's language. And so early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. Somebody help me say early. Somebody help me say early. Somebody help me say early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Praise the Lord. What an amazing word from the Lord today. We're so grateful that God just stopped by here today and blessed us in this house. Thank you to the man of God for sharing that word today. Running on empty. I know that word was definitely a message for some of you all out there. And we pray that you all would apply it to your everyday living. As we are preparing to wrap up this service today, we want to just remind you to stay tuned to our announcements that will play as soon as I pray the benediction. And we also just want you to just be prayerful for all of those who are impacted 
by this hurricane going on in the Gulf and that has hit the Gulf area. We want to continue to be lifting up those who are impacted by the coronavirus. And those, of course, who just stand in need of prayer. Maybe their requests are unknown, but they're always someone who is in need of prayer. And let's be the saints that we should be by praying for one another. May God continue to bless you and may God keep you. It is my prayer that God will smile upon you, that everything your hands touch is blessed. Everywhere your feet walk is blessed. Everything attached to you must win because you are attached to the Lord. It's my prayer that you will remain in perfect peace and that your health will remain strong. It's my prayer that your children will be blessed, your spouse will be blessed. It's my prayer that you will be blessed on your job. You'll be blessed in your coming and your going. No hurt, harm, or danger shall come to you. In Jesus' name, we rebuke the hand of the enemy and we speak life over you now. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and may God keep you. Until this time next week, we'll see you at Perfect and Love. God bless you. He got up to fill your life. He got up to fill my life. When I was running on him, he showed up and he filled my cup until it overflowed. I give him great praise because he's done great things. Would you help me one last time? And I won't bother you no more. Would you look at somebody and tell them when you're running on empty? I got a God who satisfies when you're running on empty. I got a God who satisfies when you can't find your way. I got a God who satisfies when you can't fix it in your own strength. I got a God who satisfies. Somebody help me bless his name. Yeah! Yes, sir!
Thank you for tuning in to Perfecting Live, the online worship service for Perfecting Love Community Church. Parents, do you have a safe place for your children to be successful this school year? If not, PLCC is the place for you. In partnership with the YMCA, Perfecting Love will be a virtual learning center for all the essential working parents. Space is limited, meals are included, and guess what? It's free! Go to ymcamemphis.org to register today. That's not all. If you are looking for employment, the YMCA is hiring for site workers. Visit ymcamemphis.org and apply today. Save the date. Our last Love on the Lot will be Sunday, September 13th at 12 noon, Jersey edition. Rep your favorite NFL team. Physical distancing protocols will be followed. See you then. Let's get active. Our virtual wow on Wednesdays has gone beyond our four walls. We are walking and talking. Grab your tennis shoes and earbuds and meet us at 6.30 p.m. Log in using the regular Zoom ID. And don't forget Bible study every Sunday at 9 a.m. Let's continue to grow together. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, we pray you will consider being a financial blessing to the ministry. To give, text PLCC to 77977. Click the link and follow the instructions. Thank you in advance for your generosity. For the latest information, please visit our Facebook page, Perfecting Love Community Church, our YouTube channel, Perfecting Love CC, or our website, perfectinglovecommunitychurch.org. These have been your morning announcements. We are Perfecting Love Community Church, the place where imperfect people strive for God's perfect love. We don't judge, we love, and we love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.